This is the Everything 80s Podcast, episode 28, The Popples. Inside this software ball is a neat new friend. Party and puffball popple sold separately. See? Pop goes the popple. Inside out, they twist and shout. Popples love to party. <laughs> Pop a popple, you let the fun out of the bag. Nine popple characters, including Party and Puffball, come in different sizes and colors. Each popple sold separately from Mattel. Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back to the Everything 80s Podcast. I'm Jamie. Thanks for coming on out. And today looking at what started, at, actually was influenced by a pair of rolled up socks. And that is the Popples. And we'll talk about all things to do with the toy, the cartoon, everything. But before we start, if you haven't already, do me a solid and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, wherever you like, I should be there. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so the Popples, a, a weird toy from the 80s that could fold itself into a ball. It was the basis for, again, like the cartoon show we'll get into. And um, again, if you grew up in this time, there's no way you didn't know about this toy and cartoon. And they came out in 1986. They're, in case you don't know, they're a bunch of brightly colored bears that could tuck into a ball. They were created by... Uh, company called those characters from Cleveland and they were sold to Hasbro way down the road in 2018. And they'd actually lead to another rebooted Netflix series in 2015, which I was not aware about until looking back into this. I thought, you know, as a young kid growing up, young boy in the eighties, I thought the popples were okay. I remember my sister neighbor really being into them and sometimes you just had to watch what was on when you didn't have a say in anything else. So I remember the concept being cool and the cartoon wasn't bad either. So I was maybe nine when they came out. So I could, I, I'm still young enough to get on board with any form of stuffed animal. You know, it wasn't all just like Dinobots and Cobra Commander and stuff like that, even though it mostly was. Stuff, stuffed animals still had their place. So the, the Popples, as a, um, from a marketing approach are a perfect blend of very bright colors that was hard for a kid to ignore, whether it was, you know, toy form or cartoon. So they absolutely just like catch your eye and kind of your imagination. So they didn't have a super long run during the eighties and might not be totally remembered by everyone, but I'd, I'd say most people were at least familiar. Again, there must've been enough interest to reintroduce them on Netflix in 2015 I mean, Netflix will put out anything pretty much, but they, a lot of what they do, like, you know, you always hear about like, um, YouTube algorithms and Google algorithms and these formulas on, on like for uh, computer code that, you know, figures out what people are doing. And Netflix has some of the biggest amounts of data of any platform online. And when they put together shows like Netflix originals, they like, not a lot is done by accident. All the data and inf information is there. It, like anything you do online from like, you know, things you like, your viewing habits, um, what you're talking about on Twitter, like all this stuff is analyzed. And on Netflix specifically, they'll make casting decisions for original Netflix, Netflix program that's based on all the data they have from people's like viewing habits and, and things like that. They see like what person works best in that role and what people are responding to these things and stuff like that. So when they put out a show like the Popples in 2015, it's because there's some research there. There's some data driven research that's saying there is interest in these things. That's why you put it out again. So that's okay. So if you're looking more about Popples and everything to do with this, you've come to the right place. So if you're asking what is a Popple, it's not quite a pet, not quite an apple, but no, it's, it's kind of considered a marsupial teddy bear, I think is how they classify it. They're brightly colored. They have a long tail with a pom-pom on it. So that kind of differentiates it from other 
forms of marsupial or whatever, each popple can transform itself by tucking in into itself and turning into a ball and a very brightly colored ball, which could maybe double as a pillow. Uh, they were very enjoyable to kick, I remember. That's one thing that stands out. It would switch into ball mode from a pouch um, that could be inverted, so the character would just kind of roll into itself, and boom, there you, you've got your ball. The name Popple was given because it was based on the popping noise that would be made when they unfolded themselves from the ball. Also, uh, a popping noise would be made when pulling something from their pouches. That that was sort of the impetus behind the name. And this this isn't wasn't happening with the toys. Like it's it's like they wasn't physically happening when you transform one of these things. It didn't make that popping noise. It's just from their mythology. They created up this whole background story of you know not just in the cartoon but like what they what they were coming from. So if your popple made those noises, I don't know what to tell you. So creating them starts with that group I said, those characters from Cleveland, which sounds like either a TV show or an indie rock band. They were a division of American Greetings, which is actually the largest greeting card company in the world, even bigger than Hallmark. So they had these sort of subsidiary groups, and those characters from Cleveland were one of them, and they would handle more of the toy-related things. And they would eventually change their name to American Greeting Properties. And they are extremely significant because they brought us some of the biggest toys that there was, including Care Bears, the Get Along Gang, Holly Hobby, Strawberry Shortcake, My Pet Monster, Mad Balls, all these sort of things. And like when they started, they were more geared towards girls. And that's why you saw those things like My Pet Monster, which I did a whole show about, as well as a show about Mad Balls. That was their way to sort of crack into the boys market especially with My Pet Monster. They wanted to take that plush doll sort of thing, but present it more boy-friendly, whatever that means. you know. And in that case, they made him, you know, with blue fur and he had fangs and he had those like handcuffs. And, you know, so it was seen more as a toy as opposed to a plush animal. So I talked about that idea of rolling up a pair of socks and that's, it wasn't a joke. That's apparently the story on how they came up with the idea from the Popples. One of the plush toy designers from that group, those characters from Cleveland, was named Susan Trentel. And she's the one who came up with the design for the Popples. She also brought other heavyweight toys like Strawberry Shortcake and the Care Bears. So she's pretty much in the rock star um, toy designer hall of fame, if there is one of those hall of fames. There probably is, I'm sure, somewhere. Anyway... The method for the transforming the popple said to come from simply rolling up a pair of socks that she was just doing one day. She would then work with an art director named Thomas Schneider on creating prototypes for the first popples. So even though it was created by those characters from Cleveland who was owned by American Greetings, it was Mattel that actually manufactured the popples. And they first put them out in 1986. So in that first group of popples, um, again, I don't know. What do you call a group of popples? Like a pod of popples, a flock of a bundle of popples. I think bundle works either way. The first bundle of popples was made up of nine different ones. And they included, these are the actual names. Uh, pretty cool. A male popple with blue, pink fur party was a large female that was pink, hot pink and lavender. You're going to see a lot of hot pinks. Pancake was female with purple, orange and pink fur. Puzzle was medium sized had orange, green, and pink fur. Prize was medium sized with magnetic green, pink, and white fur. Or is it hair? Whatever. We'll go with fur. Puffball. Aren't, aren't they all puff, puff balls? But that was uh, more white. Pretty Bit was a small female who was white, yellow, blue, and magenta. Potato Chip was small female, yellow, pink, magenta, lavender. And Putter was a small male who was green, orange, pink, blue, and red. I just realized all these names started with P when I was going through this. Um, and even though I did not remember some of these names, I think I remember a potato chip, but I digress. So then there's other Popple editions. They, like I said, they weren't around very long and they only had a couple of good years like me. It's understandable because like the eighties is probably the most competitive time in the history of toys and cartoons. There was the, the, the time of deregulation where the the floodgates were opened up. There was no restrictions on what could be done in advertising. And there were a lot of these restrictions in the seventies. And like 
TV shows couldn't be specifically made to produce or sorry, to promote toys. Even commercials were only allowed to show like short little sections of like cartoon based things. So it wasn't the confusion that it was um, a commercial and not a cartoon. The when Ronald Reagan became president, one of the first things they do, did with the FCC was lift all the regu- regulations and said like the market's going to determine what's successful or not. And that's why you see this avalanche of toys that come out and cartoons that come out in the eighties. Um, GI Joe, Transformers, He Man, um, Strawberry Shortcake, Gem and the Holograms, Care, all that stuff. It's also why you see more kind of an explosion of fast food and, you know, McDonald's commercials that essentially look like cartoons or cereal commercials that look like cartoons. Basically all these restrictions, um, on being able to, you know, advertise however you wanted and and manipulate kids were were taken away now, like with toys and cartoons, there's more, you know, the educational components that have to go in and they consult with like child psychologists and all that sort of thing. In the eighties, it was the wild west, like anything went. So it was hard to be competitive in this, um, chaos time of toys and cartoons. So, you know, they didn't last long, but having a few good years in the eighties is pretty impressive. Um, so, you know, then after they, they brought out some different variations of the popples. They brought out rock star popples and baby popples. They were sort of like punk rocky little popples and little baby ones. The babies had rattles in their tails and came with little squeaking baby bottles, which is adorable. There were the sports popples. I definitely remember these as they were a blatant attempt to cross over and get more of the boy market. Basically, they were sport popples that turned into balls and you had big kick, which was a soccer ball, dunkster, which was a basketball, obviously. Touchdown, you know what that is. PC pitcher was a baseball. Net set was a tennis ball. I remember someone having that popple, and we just like would kick the crap out of the thing. And Qster was in eight ball, not cocaine, but uh, for pool table. Then there were the pufflings. They were like little popple pets, but it's confusing because the popple was already a pet, but it was the pet of the pet. They were just actual little fluff balls that had a face and tiny paws and tail coming out. They were the pocket popples, and these were pretty successful. And uh, they were basically scaled down popples that would just fit in your pocket. And I remember seeing these in stores, and you could sort of move their arms and legs and everything like that. And then next we'll get into the popples cartoon. So you probably remember this theme song and this cartoon, and I'm sure most people did, but you might not realize how it all came together. Kind of an interesting story, and it involves Shelley Duvall, of all people. So, yeah, Shelley Duvall, a.k.a. Olive Oil, a.k.a. Wendy Torrance in The Shining. How in the hell was she involved with the Popples? So the Popples cartoon started with this live-action pilot And it was actually pretty successful, actually really successful. And they decided to make a cartoon series with all the same characters. And it ran from 1986 to 1987. The pilot included the use of marionettes and puppets. And again, you can watch this on YouTube and it's pretty creepy. Actually, it's really creepy. You're like, I don't know. You're waiting for these things to come out of nowhere and kill you. But um, look up the, the actual live action pilot for the popples the basic premise is nine of the popples from that original series i had mentioned before live with human brother and sister named billy and bonnie they think they are the only kids that know about popples until they find out that their neighbors also have some the neighbors have the rock stars pufflings and baby popples which was a perfectly good way to spread the brand around. The kids try to hide the existence of the popples from their parents, but in the live action show, the parents find out, but in the cartoon, they never do. So kind of like elf, I guess a bit. So in season one, they would have 24 episodes along with 20 episodes from season two. One of the voice actors in the show, uh, Noam, Zeibelman also did voices in some big things like the elf cartoon, the police Academy cartoon, 
Star Wars droids. And he was the voice of Split Kid from the Garbage Pail Kids. And so in that song, um, or it's a whole other song. If you watch the the pilot, there's a song called Popple's Magic. And it was written by a guy named Rob Muir. And he they play it at the end of the live action pilot. He actually helped write and play on Sailing by Christopher Cross. So that was his two claims to fame, that and the Popples. So that uh, brings us to the Netflix reboot and the other releases. And like I said, I didn't know there was that much interest in Popples in 2015, but I guess it's always worth taking a crack at something. Like there's an Inspector Gadget reboot that's on Netflix. And I did a whole show on Inspector Gadget if you want to go back and listen to that one. You know, ultimately, like I said, that when you're doing market research and you're seeing if there's any little bit of life less left in these original properties, it just means you don't have to come up with original programming all the time. You can use all the history and backstory and characters that are already there. And the fact, you know, if something worked in the 80s and got an audience with kids, there's no reason to think it might not again in whatever the current year is. And I think that's the approach. So this thing's actually been on for three seasons. And the premise this time around is following the comedic adventures of Bubbles, Sunny, Lulu, Izzy, and Yikes. So the series came out on October 30th, 2015, and it started with 10 episodes. As far as toy reboots, the, the company there's a company called Toy Max, and they started making the Popples again in 2001. They released some new characters that still looked a bit like the old ones, but they named them after celebrities. So you could buy a Jessica Biel Popple and a Melissa Joan Hart Popple of all people. So I do not get what was going on behind that. In 2007, Playmates Toys who also owns other American Greetings toys, like things like Strawberry Shortcake and whatever, they put out four new characters called Pop and Giggles Popples. This time, they include a sound box, which actually made that pop noise when they came out. So they're able to go back to that original mythology and actually put it into the the current form. So to coincide with that new Netflix series, a company called Spin Master and Sabin Brands put out toys of the five new versions from the series. And that Saban, that's the group that brought back Power Rangers. So they obviously thought there was a lot um, that was still left in the popples. They had a little bit of life left in them. So I'll start winding it down here. And that's basically a quick look at what the popples were. Like it turns out they came and went pretty quick, but they obviously made enough of an impact in 1986. I think it was a unique idea and pretty creative uh, if you compare them to a lot of the other crap you saw flooding the market at the time. Like as much as there was a lot of amazing things that we get from the 80s, there's still a lot of garbage, obviously, because everything, you know, with this whole time of deregulation, companies are just throwing anything at the wall to see what will stick. You barely have time to think, you know, and you're just seeing what will happen. And, you know, a lot of stuff didn't. And that was one idea that hit for a little bit and did well. And I do, I understand the appeal. I'm kind of surprised they didn't last longer than they did. Like, I, it seems like that would have been like a TV series that would have lasted five or six years, a la like, I don't know, like My Little Pony. or. But the fact that it's still going again today means I guess it did. Like, it, it seems like something that would have actually made a, a good movie. But like, with so many things to distract you and vie for your attention in the 80s, just making that little bit of a mark was obviously a success. And the fact that we're talking about it right now that I thought it was worth looking back into, it means it, it did have a bit of an impact. Okay, so I'm all done here. Thanks for listening. Again, if you like the uh, show, please subscribe so you get the shows automatically sent to you whenever I put them out. I try to put them out every week on a Wednesday. If you really like the show, hook me up with a rating and review. That way more people get to see it. You can share it around if you like, on the fancy social media the kids like, but at least you have it here for your enjoyment. So thanks for listening. See you soon.